The Vancouver Canucks have won back-to-back -back hockey games, folks. You're not dreaming. This is a team that was able to beat two of the worst teams in the NHL in a row. So we've got the fun music going today uh, as a, uh, you know what, <laughs> we might as well have some fun uh, because the Canucks scored six goals tonight. Uh, it's something that they, I don't think they've done since the game where they beat the Stars 6-3, and then I think they went on and lost a bunch of games after that. But, hey, we can look at this game. We can have some fun as uh, we saw lots of uh, lots of fun goals coming in. So, as always, we'll do the recap. We'll do the, the pluses, minuses, all that stuff. Your thoughts on the game. And then I'm going to go play some hockey of my own. So, it's going to be a perfect night to talk about our Van Vancouver Canucks the uh, the last game until Saturday Canucks will play Thursday or Friday so this is the last time you'll see me for a couple of days but it's Thatcher Demko it's Gustafson I don't even know Gustafson's first name to be honest uh, I don't care enough to look it up I am actually going to look at it it starts with an F Frederick maybe is it Frederick it's Philip Philip Gustafson had a rough night uh, because the Canucks scored early a minute and a half into this game. It is Tanner Pearson and the night of chaos for former Vancouver Canuck, former Chicago Blackhawk, um, sage burning man, healing crystal guy himself. Adam Gaudet uh, just did a poor job of defending here. It's his guy uh, on uh, on Tanner Pearson. Uh, Connor Garland makes a great play down low to win a battle, get the puck in front. Tanner Pearson scores one nothing Vancouver early. Um, Canucks had a power play in, in this period. It was kind of fine. Had a couple chances, got killed off, whatever. Um, then Chase on takes a penalty with about seven minutes left. Uh, I guess nine minutes left or so in the period. Uh, hooks Shabbat sort of in the legs, sort of uh, between the legs. And Adam Gaudet scores. Uh, basically left all by himself in the back door. Uh, and he's, he's, it's an easy goal. Uh, he sells his heart as he always does. Good for him. Uh, classic penalty killing from the Canucks here on the first power play of the night for Ottawa. Uh, so we're tied at one. Um, Tyler Myers had a great chance late in this period, by the way, he went in two on O with JT Miller, uh, after Brock Besser had a beautiful little saucer pass to force it. Um, although JT Miller, you're coming in, you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalie and you, you pass it over to Tyler Myers. I get the idea, right? Make the goalie move, but come on. You have such a better chance of scoring than Tyler Myers does in tight on a goalie. We saw it with three minutes left in the game tonight, and we'll get to that. Uh, but sort of a, a good tank commander move to make that pass off to Tyler Myers, uh, who just come into the box for a penalty. Uh, but the period ends 1-1, shots 11 aside. Really even game to start, honestly. Um, but Ottawa sort of falls asleep the rest of this game. Second period, it's Adam Gaudet once again. <laughs> just being in the middle of everything for the first three goals. He gets to, he gets the puck in his own zone. He needs to clear it out. He needs to make some sort of play. And uh, Garland is all over him, forces him to give up the puck, uh, feeds it over to Tyler Mott, who scores. Tyler Mott gets a second of the season. Um, Canucks almost score again later. It's Oliver Ekman Larson putting one off the crossbar. Then Nick Holden the other way puts it off the crossbar for Ottawa. This period was a mess. There was like... Eight penalties, I want to say, in this period. I don't have the exact uh, the exact number in front of me, but maybe more. There was a ton of penalties that happened in the second period. There was Ottawa having like a full minute of five on three, which the Canucks killed off to their credit. There was a bunch of four on four time. And on that four on four late in the uh, second period with 30 seconds to go, it's Luke Shen with the hands. He makes a little move to the inside, uh, just gets around Formanton, goes to the forehand, goes far post past Gustafson to make it 3-1 as the period comes to an end. Shots in the second period, 10-5. to So Canucks ramping up pressure uh, as Ottawa just sort of falls on their heels and, and just doesn't play very good, to be honest. Uh, we go to the third. There's another four-on-four four because there was a scrum going on. So uh, Quinn Hughes decides, I'm just going to walk into the zone. Uh, which he does. He leaves the puck for Bo Horvat. We have Tyler Myers going to the net, screening the goalie. Uh, and it is a perfect shot from Bo Horvat from the high slot. Like an absolutely gorgeous shot. Rister perfectly placed through two bodies, beats Gustafson. Uh, and it's four to one for the Canucks. And the game's wrapped at this point, right? It's four one against Ottawa. Ottawa's not coming back in this one. But the Canucks keep keep it going. They get a power play in the third period. And it's Alex Chason 
uh, adding a power play marker as Gustafson sort of struggles with a rebound on the power play. It was a point shot uh, that got through. Jason bangs at home for his third net front elite power play player, Alex Jason, um, as we were told he would be uh, with his third goal of the season. Doesn't sound like a lot for an elite net front guy, but hey. Uh, and then uh, Brady Kachuk scores for the Sens a few minutes later, uh, which made it 5-2. And then on a late power play for the Canucks, JT Miller decides to show off. And boy, did he show off. He decides, yeah, I'm just going to zoop, zoop, zoop through everybody. Starts at his own blue line, goes end to end, goes through three people. Kind of like Connor McDavid did, except a lot less impressive because it was Ottawa and they were more spread out. And it was three guys instead of four, and it was slower, but he still scored. He went between all three of them, went to the forehand, tucked it in past Gustafson to make it 6-2. Insult to injury uh, for the Sens, and the Canucks take this one 3-2, uh, 6-2. Uh, shots in this game end up being 35-21 in favor of the Canucks, a power play that goes 2-6. for six. Let's get into the pluses, the minuses. Um, I have a lot of pluses. I don't usually have, I think I have about eight pluses now. Um, I'm adding another one. I have nine pluses. Uh, so let's go through, you guys want to start on the negative side? Let's start on the negative side. Cause we have so many pluses, uh, bad things about this game. Uh, so many penalties on both sides, right? Canucks had 12 penalty minutes. Senators had 14, just a lot of penalties being called. It was a very chippy game, which was kind of fun, but, um, I don't know. just made the game take a long time. Uh, other minus is that Ottawa is bad. Uh, they have won four games this season, which is actually less than the Canucks have won. The Canucks have now won eight games this season. <laughs> Bravo, Vancouver Canucks. Um, the road trip as a whole is a minus. They go two and three on the road trip. Uh, they lose to the three good teams. They beat the two bad teams. I guess they've sort of cemented themselves as not the absolute bottom of the barrel. So that's a good thing. Uh, still last place in the division. Uh, Seattle lost 4-3 in a shootout just now to Detroit. Uh, which means Seattle gets a point, which means the Canucks and Kraken are tied in points. Seattle has a game in hand, so uh, so they retain seventh spot. Um, and on the whole road trip, I mean, the Canucks scored, what, one, two, 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 and six goals. So they averaged, that's what, 15 goals in five? No, it's 12 goals. Two, 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 one is seven, and then six is 13. So 13 goals in six games. Uh, or in five games, 13 and five games, 2.6 goals per game. That's really low, uh, but at least this one was good. So let's go to the pluses. So many pluses here. Um, so many goals. This has been the big issue with the Canucks, right? The Canucks have been putting themselves in games where sometimes they're the better team, right? That game against Columbus, for example, they put up like 40 shots, 41 shots, and they lose because they only score a goal uh, or two goals or whatever it was. Um, all these get like the Boston game, they lose by a goal. They're just, they're so good at losing hockey games by one goal this season. And it's usually not because they're allowing one too many. It's because they're scoring one too few. Uh, they lose four, two to the blue jackets, three, two to the Bruins. They lost, they lost one, nothing to the Blackhawks a week and a half ago, four, two to the Avs. Like they're scoring like one or two goals a game and you can't win that way. So they go out there, they score six. So give yourself a bit of a gap. Uh, but it was at least very fun. Uh, JT Miller, Quinn Hughes, each with three-point nights. I don't think there was anyone else that had three points for the Canucks. No. Uh, oh, Hughes had four. Hughes had four assists. Uh, I guess I missed one on this list. Maybe they gave him one on the last goal? Yeah, they added Pedersen and Hughes assists on the last goal after I put in the uh, the unassisted. So Hughes gets a four-assist night to his credit. JT Miller gets a goal and two assists. Uh, I think that takes Quinn Hughes to 20 points on the season. He has uh, he has two goals, 18 assists, so 20 points in 23 games. It takes JT Miller up to 23 points in 24 games. So he hasn't had much on the score sheet the last couple nights, but uh, he'll get a good chunk of points here tonight. Um, Thatcher Demko got a point, uh, which is good for him. Good job, Thatcher. Uh, also thought he had a really solid game. Uh, again, He this whole road trip, he has been absolutely excellent. Two goals on 21 shots, but... I mean, he did what he had to do. Um, I mean, you're not going to save that Godet goal. And, uh, you know, you're fine with that. Uh, you win you win 6-2. You're okay with how your goalie played. Um, the penalty kill went 80% tonight. Hey, you know, the, the Ottawa power play, yes, it scored, sure. But only went one for five. So that means the Vancouver Canucks had uh, an 80% penalty kill effectiveness, which is uh, it's pretty good. 
I mean, it's it's very average. It's below average, I think, if you look at around the NHL. But for this team, it is really good. What's the average penalty kill? If I pick like the middle team, middling the median penalty kill is eighty one point five percent. But hey, eighty percent is pretty good when your team's running at sixty three. So we take those. Um, they beat the two bad teams, but they beat them back to back, two back to back wins. Two power play goals for the team tonight. They go two for six, um, which is great. Um, Ottawa blocked 23 shots. Now, this doesn't sound like a plus because the Canucks only blocked eight. But that means that shots that were on target, as in they hit a player or they hit the net, um, Vancouver had 58 and Ottawa had 29. Literally double. Uh, exactly double uh, on the uh, on that shot counter and shots blocked. If I look at, uh, let's look at natural stat trick to see Corsi. Corsi was, which is just shot attempts in general that can be misses, blocks, all the like. 73 to 38 in favor of the Canucks. High danger chances were 18 to 8 in favor of the Canucks. Expected goals 3.6 to 2 in favor of the Canucks. Um, scoring chances in general 45 to 26. It was a it was a dominant game, and it was a game the Canucks had to have, and. I have shown heat maps occasionally on the stream or on Canucks After Dark of like Canucks shot locations over the course of a game. There is a big blob in the slot and in front of the net. It's almost always at the point and around the outside. The Canucks were able to get to the middle of the ice tonight. Uh, and that is a big deal when you're trying to score goals. Um, it's something they haven't been able to do all season. They do it tonight, albeit it is Ottawa. Um, but it was at least a, uh, a good night in that regard. Uh, my last plus, Connor Garland, two assists. That's it tonight. So if you look at the score sheet, like, oh, I had a fine night. Uh, but he's just causing trouble. Uh, his two assists were off of really good plays. He was a plus three. He had five shots on goal. He was just causing mayhem. He was just disturbing the peace. And he is very, very good at that. Uh, so good on Connor Garland tonight. We continue to love him as a player. Uh, if I had to give a game puck out tonight, uh, it's probably JT Miller because he had four or three points, but when he was at four, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll give it to both. Uh, there's no rules here. Uh, so let's get to your thoughts, your takes. We have all your comments here. Uh, quick shout outs, uh, BL tubes joining the VIPs. Thank you very much. And Gmod with a $2 super chat saying $2 for two wins, $3 Thursday. I hope so. I mean, yeah, I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> not even, you know, the, the $3 is nice, but I just, I want to see some wins uh, going up against some hard opponents coming up here, though. The Canucks have, uh, what's the schedule here? They've got Pittsburgh on Saturday, back at home, but still Pittsburgh Saturday, LA Monday, which isn't that bad, but the Bruins Wednesday, the Jets Friday, the Hurricanes Sunday, the Blue Jackets Tuesday. So, they're kicking off a six-game homestand, which you think, okay, you, you should win a, a good chunk of those. You're at home, but you're also looking at the teams they're playing, and there's some problems there. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but hopefully they can uh, disappoint Pittsburgh at least a little bit. Does Pittsburgh have a back-to-back -back going into that? Because I know they play tonight as well. Uh, no, they also have a two-day break going into it. So two well-rested teams going into Saturday night's game. All right. Um Lots of love for Luke Ch Luke Shen in the pre-chat before we got started. Um, let's see what we've got here. Niels Hoagler saying, fire green and Benning. Yeah, I saw some people saying early, um, you know, is this time to, uh, you know, is this going to delay Travis Green and Jim Benning being fired? I don't think so. I, I think they're already sort of one foot out the door. At least Travis Green is from what we've heard. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think if... The six losses and the, the the last three losses in a row, or whatever it has been, um, before this game, the four losses in a row. How I I lose count when they lose so much. Um, but they lost like nine of their last ten at one point. I don't think two wins against Montreal and Ottawa are going to be overshadowing um, <laughs> that stretch. So I wouldn't be uh, too uh, too into uh, too worried about that. Um. Let's see what else we got. Sion saying, should we have grabbed Godet from waivers? No, Adam Godet did not have a good game tonight. Uh, he had the one goal, sure, um, but that was like backdoor on the power play because the penalty kill is terrible. But he also scored, or he also was the direct reason for two goals against. Uh, Adam Godet's not a great player, uh, and the Canucks won the trade. Um, 
Total Biscuit Fanboy saying, anyone else see the extend Benning sign during the first? I saw a lot of funny signs uh, during the game, at least on Twitter. Um, so yeah, good, good for them. Um, let's see here. Quatrob saying the Senators look like the Canucks when they play against good teams, but without a good goalie. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't just the goalie tonight. Obviously the Canucks were by miles the better team. Um, but yeah, Besser and Patterson didn't have great games. At least, uh, Patterson gets on the score sheet, but in games like this, you know, when your supporting cast does a good job and you're up a bunch of goals, they don't need to. Uh, the coach doesn't need to give them a ton of ice time. Uh, I mean, Pedersen played 13 minutes tonight. Besser played 17. Uh, the only forward to play above 20 was Horvat, And uh, Tyler Myers again playing 24 minutes. What a monster. Um, but yeah, I'm not too concerned uh, on this one. Uh, Kurt saying, finally got to watch the Canucks win one. Yes, finally. It probably was your fault, to be honest, um, the, early, uh, the early failures. Um, Dimitri saying, uh, asking about Travis green sort of, uh, and again, I I'll stick with what I said before, but, uh, yeah, they can beat the weakest teams, uh, which is fun. Uh, the elder saying, I have the feeling the Canucks will beat the penguins and Kings to extend to a four game winning streak. I would very happily bet, ag bet against you on that to not happen, <laughs> but if it did, it would be fun at the very least. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dimitri saying, also fun fact, Canucks are undefeated this season when scoring six goals. Now, <laughs> this this reminds me a lot of like the football stats that people like like to sort of trot out. And people are like, in football, they're like, man, teams that run the ball in the fourth quarter usually win games. And it's like, yeah, because usually the team's already winning. Uh, yeah, scoring six goals in a game, it really helps you win. Um, so I think they should try to do that. A little bit more often. They could just score like five goals a game. They'd be a pretty good team. Um, Fangirl saying on a scale of one to ten, how nervous am I for the Pittsburgh game on Saturday? I'm not nervous. I I, I don't think the results really matter at this point, right? Um, like again, they're last in the division. Uh, they are seven points out of a playoff spot against teams that will all have two games in hand right now. Um, they're not they, like, they'd need a miracle at this point. This will help their odds a little bit, but not by a lot. Um, so I'm not that I'm not really nervous or anything. I'm just hoping that, uh, I'm hoping it'll be at least be a fun one. I'm hoping for wins on my part, to be honest, just selfishly. Uh, yeah, there was the, I love Pullman sign there as well. Uh, Victoria saying, who's a player apart from Demko that you think is constantly playing well? Demko is the obvious answer. Um, I think Tyler Mott is always a good answer for something like that. Now, did I close my, my game stats? There we go. Um, Connor Garland is another really easy answer. Uh, Niels Hoaglander has been a little less prevalent recently, but I always think he's got good effort level. Um, and uh, Pod Colson, I really like to watch. Uh, and I think Quinn Hughes has had a, a much better year than last year. Um, so I think he's uh, he's really improved. Fangirl with the 139 super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Samuel saying thoughts on Pedersen. Um, he looked a little, I noticed on the first power play, I think it was the very first power play. Pedersen was being shiftier and quicker. Uh, and I liked that. So that was like the one plus I saw from him tonight. Uh, other than that, I mean, we're sort of on the same course. Um, I'm not going to be too worried about it until it's been like a long time, which it has been a long time since he's played great. Um, but again, I, I'm, trusting in Elias Patterson to uh, to work things out. Uh, Rahul saying two highlight real goals from the Canucks with Luke Shen and Miller, but which one was better? Um, the better goal was JT Miller's. The more impressive goal was Luke Shen's just because of expectations, right? You don't expect Luke Shen to go in, beat a guy, move, make a move to the forehand and beat the goalie. Uh, but Miller's was a better goal. Uh, but big shout out to Luke Shen there. Um, Christian saying sh thoughts on Shen. Uh, he is a defenseman who is doing fine. Honestly. Um, yeah, I like him more than Pullman and it's not really close to be honest. Uh, like it's not close at all. Um, <laughs> I would, uh, I'd much rather have Shen in the lineup. I think he's been fine. Uh, Bob saying, what's the plan come trade deadline time? Uh, we're looking so far ahead here. I, I don't, I don't see a world where this team is back in it, in the mix come trade deadline time. If by some miracle they are 
right? Let's say by some miracle, the Canucks are like a point out of the playoffs at the trade deadline. That will mean that they've gone on a really good run, like 110 point pace of a run. If that's the case, then this team might be buying because they'll be waiting the more recent games more than the early ones. However, that's so unlikely. It's so much more likely that they're still going to be six, seven, 12 points. Who knows? Outside of a playoff spot by then. Um, and at that point, you know, get rid of everyone that that um, either isn't really a part of your, your future or your core or in general like that. Uh, I think guys like Tyler Mott could be really good pieces to to try to dangle at the deadline. Uh, regardless of how much I love Tyler Mott, he's on an expiring deal um, and he is, you know, he, he's got a lot of he'll have really good value for a playoff contender, right? That there he is the perfect player for a playoff team. Um, and you know, all those guys, right? JT Miller is a guy who I could definitely see being, uh, being on the block, uh, basically everyone else sort of on that, uh, on that level. Um, Joven asking thoughts on Besser. Uh, I think he's a cool guy. Um, I don't know. He's been fine. I, I don't think he's been like impressive or anything, but I think he's been okay for the most part. Sure. He's not playing great, but I don't think he's been terrible. Uh, Cam saying, do we just qualify Besser for one year or lock him down or try to trade him? It depends on what you think he's going to do, right? If you think that he, this is a, this is sort of a down time and, and you know, he could bounce back, right? We, he, the last 40 games of the season, he could score, you know, 20 goals or whatever. Uh, and this could all be moot, but if he continues to have a pretty rough season, um, then you could look at it and think, okay, well maybe we're able to buy low. Um, so you would probably give him like that one year qualifying offer at 7.5, which you'd have to do. And then you could have also probably offer him something longer term, maybe like six by six, which seems low, but the way he's been playing, that might be reasonable, right? So you might be able to, if you think he's going to bounce back, you can bet on him and go longer term and, and try to sort of lock him up at a cheaper number based on how he's played recently. However, if he bounces back and is excellent and, you know, ends up scoring 30 goals this year or something, um, which I don't know what his current stats are currently he has four goals, five assists, right? So he's on like a 40 point pace, which isn't great. 40 points, like 16 goals. If that pace continues, um, then yeah, you might want to, might want to bet on him and go long, long term. Or if you're scared of him, you'd go short term. Um, it's, uh, it really depends on what you think he's going to do because you could also, if he, if he pops off, you could then say, oh, well, maybe he just got lucky for a while. Let's just do the one year QO. Cause he'll make play worse. And then we can extend him after his, it's really complicated, but I, uh, it, I don't think they're going to try to trade him though. I, I think that's a silly move. Um, Rahul saying, is Demko going to make it to the U S Olympic team? He's got a shot. Uh, I know he's, I think they mentioned on the broadcast day, he, he was sort of the shoe in, um, to get in, in the top three, but the way Jack Campbell's been playing uh, is he's probably going to be taking someone out um, because I mean, they're going to, they're going to take the guy who, I mean, what's his stats at this year? Uh, he's got a, he's got a nine forty six this year, right? They're going to take the guy with a nine forty six, right? They're going to replace somebody uh, because it's not about who has the best history. It's about who's playing the best right now. Who do you want in net in those big Olympic games? And, uh, and Jack Campbell is going to be a great option, um, for the U S team. Um, Joe Van saying, which player do you want to trade? Um, it depends when, if we're talking right now, uh, someone like if you get anything for a guy like Tanner Pearson or Tucker Pullman, I would be really happy with that. If we're talking at the deadline and the Canucks are out of it, like I said, something like a Tyler Mott, you might go the JT Miller route. Um, and just sort of, it really depends on what's available though, right? Yaz saying, how many pieces do you think the Canucks need to add in order to consistently play in the postseason? Uh, I think, I think they need better defense to be honest. Uh, th like that's a big part of it. They need better depth defense, um, and sort of mid defense. Um, I think, I think they have the offensive talent to be a playoff team. And the thing is, if you want to be a playoff team long-term, you get seven players for free every year in the draft. Sure, maybe you only hit on one or two, but teams that consistently hit on their first draft pick of every draft or their second draft pick of every draft, um, and you keep... Ha so if you're a playoff team and you can bring in basically every, every year, you're graduating one new guy on a cheap contract into your roster. 
it's been the Tampa Bay model for a while now, right? Every year, someone new joins their team who you've never heard of and does pretty good. Um, and that is how you maintain a team that can consistently uh, be in the playoffs for a long time, right? Otherwise, uh, if you if you draft really good for a while and then bad for a while, you're going to have those ebbs and flows as people age out, uh, people get priced out on contracts. Because, um, I mean, in, in, a league, in, a, in a salary cap league, uh, the differentiator between teams is how much value you're getting for your dollar, right? Because every team has the same amount of money to spend, but if you can have better players for your dollars than the other teams can have for their dollars, um, you'll have a better team. Uh, so getting guys on cheap contracts uh, that are coming up as rookies through your system and developing and, and putting that effort in uh, is how you sort of can build, ideally, build a team for the long term. Obviously easier said than done. Uh, and Tony saying, if we're buying at the trade deadline, who are the Canucks replacing? I don't think they're really replacing anybody. I mean, I think if you want a hole to fill the trade deadline, we're talking defense most likely or Tanner Pearson. <laughs> um, but I, I think, you know, they, they'd be looking at a replacement for a guy like Tucker pool or, or yeah, Tucker Pullman or like Kyle Burrows or something like that. Um, but if we're talking about who they're replacing in the standings to become a buyer, um, I mean, it has to be four teams. They, they got to leapfrog Seattle, LA, and like San Jose, uh, if they want to pull that off. Uh, Dave, you Hunter saying, how is Marchand capped out at 6.125? Is that actually what he makes? That seems, I thought he made like nine. That is crazy. And he's, and that's a, <laughs> and he's locked in for another couple of years. Yeah, I mean, he's only gotten better. Brad Marchand's only gotten better throughout his career, right? I mean, we're talking about a guy who's putting up, you know, top five, top three in scoring every year right now, um, which is crazy for a guy who's, you know, 37 years old now, right? You know, he he signs his contract uh, in 20, like before the 2017-18 season, and then he has his best year of his career so far with 85 points in 68 games, and he has 100 points, 87 points. Like, he's he's only gotten better. Uh, after he signed that contract, which is kind of why they signed him long term and he, he got better for some reason. Um, Rahul's asking about the Blue Jays. Um, I know nothing about the Blue Jays. This is a shirt that I am wearing that says Blue Jays on it because it is a shirt that I was given years ago and it lives in my drawer. Uh, go Mariners. Uh, <laughs> as in go Mariners as in if I ever cheer for a baseball team, it's them because they're close and that will be like I cheered for them the one game that they needed to win to make the playoffs. And it's the only time I watched baseball in the last five years. I'm just not a baseball guy. Um, and with that, let's take a couple more. Uh, Ray is on the Mariners. Okay. Well, there we go. I don't see, I don't know these things. I know they signed some people. Um, Krishna asking what time hockey games will be with the time difference in the Olympics. Uh, uh, where are they? Beijing, Beijing time. Beijing is 11.41 a.m. If you assume the games are going to be at like 5 p.m.-ish, uh, then we're talking 1 a.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. Eastern. I'm good with a 1 a.m. game. I can make that work. I'd, I'd much rather them be um, at like 10 p.m. at the latest. There will be some earlier day games that we'll have as sort of late night ones here. But um, I mean, yeah, like an 8 p.m. game is going to be like a 4 a.m. game for us, which is fun. Get up early, go to work after, have a few beers. That's the dream. Um, Antonio saying Pearson for Max Domi. Is Max Domi doing that bad that Pearson is an option? Because Pearson's not very good. Um, I don't know what the whole deal around Max Domi is. I know that he's like has some sort of coach disagreement or something. I mean, he's got a point of game this season almost, but um, I can't answer that for you right now. I don't know what Max Domi's doing. Um, Lauren saying came in late. So I don't know, but the covered other thoughts on the JT Miller goal was the defense bad or was it, was it good? Uh, JT Miller took advantage of the defense that wasn't playing well, right? The defense was flat footed. They were lazy. Uh, Miller saw an opening and he took it. It was a really good goal against some not great players. Uh, RP 88 saying which player currently on the team would you replace with an Abbotsford Canucks player and why? Uh, let me just quick. I don't want to forget someone. I, Phil D. Giuseppe. I want Phil D. Giuseppe in the lineup. Let's be real here. Um, who else is on the roster? I guess Rathbone's down there, isn't he? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, bring Jack Rathbone back, uh, but again, you'd have to waive someone to do that. Um, someone like Phil DiGiuseppe, who's been playing pretty well, uh, throw Klimovich in if you want. I don't know. Um, you got options. There's some decent players down there. Um, JK saying, do we trade Highmore? Uh, I mean, we don't even know what we even have in Highmore. If, if the Canucks are out of it at the end of the year and the trade deadline and he has any value, then sure. Um, why not? Right. He's probably not a, a future piece of the team really. Um, but he's been fine. Uh, Rahul, what is one thing? Tra- uh, sorry, it's not up on screen. What is one thing Travis Green excels at as a coach and one thing he needs to improve on as a coach? Um, I think my, one of my biggest gripes with his coaching is the, the system around breakouts, uh, and just getting the puck out of the zone. It's something the Canucks mightily struggle with. It's something that is pretty obvious. If you watch it back, uh, when the Canucks defense gets the puck in their own zone, the wingers get out, the wingers blow the zone. Like they leave the zone and it it forces D men to make the sort of stretch pass out. We saw it with that Pullman play last game where he tried to send that stretch pass to Bo Horvat at center, hit him in the skates, and they went the other way and scored uh, against Montreal. Um, so that's that's my big uh, dislike. In I just it really frustrates me to see a bad breakout because if players just come back, sort of make a U, what you, you get a winger on the wall in the half wall, you have a center come back, make a U, basically a one two tip pass to the centerman who has momentum and he takes it out of the zone. Guy on him, play it to one of the sides, off the boards and out. Right, do something simple uh, and a consistent breakout that doesn't involve like these stretch passes. Um, what he excels at as a coach uh, is kind of tricky. I think. Honestly, for me, it's it's him as a communicator and just sort of as like he seems like a good person to have in the locker room. Like I feel like I feel like he's a good players coach, even though he might not be right now. Um, but I think he just sort of gets it, if that makes sense. Um, and I like hearing him talk. I think he's a good speaker um, that people can get behind, even if they're not getting behind him right now. Uh, Lawrence saying, do we know what's up with what's up with Hamannick? Uh He is now officially considered fully vaccinated by the NHL, which means that he can travel anywhere. He can play in all the games. He is just currently out with an illness. Uh, apparently he has a flu or something. Um, Sam saying, I have to, eat my, have to eat my I have to eat my words. I generally thought they dropped back to back games. I can't shake the feeling the momentum is going to carry forward. Look. These were the two really bad teams they just beat, right? They just beat Ottawa and Montreal. We're not trying to get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, this doesn't mean all that much. Um, I also thought they'd lose both. I, I said that on Canucks After Dark. I said the Canucks are going to lose every game uh, uh, or the last two games of the road trip. Uh, I was more saying that for fun and trying to be silly, uh, but I, w- I wouldn't have been surprised if that happened. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they, they beat the teams that they really should have beat. Uh, and you know, you can only beat the teams in front of you. Um, Lauren saying, does anyone know what Garland said to the Ottawa bench? Nope. But I'm sure it would, like, it must've been bad because they were all really upset of it, uh, about it. Uh, but it was entertaining. Uh, Soviet saying, do you think we should target DeBrusque? Uh, I, I saw a lot of stuff connecting him to the Oilers. And I think a lot of that is because, Louis DeBrusque is Jake DeBrusque's dad and he's on the Oilers broadcast. So there's a lot of talk around in like Oilers circles. Um, I, I would like DeBrusque. I think he'd be a really good sort of reclamation project. I saw people floating like, oh, well, what if we got DeBrusque for Tanner Pearson? I say you take that and you run uh, because, I mean, I think he's a better player. He has a higher potential and they make the same money basically. Um if that was an option, then I think you take it. If it's like for Pearson and like a third, I'm still considering it. Uh, because again, I don't think Pearson has a ton of value in that scenario. I, I think the third is pulling a lot of weight. Um, if you could do something like that, I don't know if that's, I think it might take more. Apparently there was like eight teams calling uh, about DeBrusque. But if they could do something like that, um, I'd be all for it. Um, Cam asking about the, the Kevin Epp interview on Donnie and Dolly. Yeah. I mean, again, going after the media for, for being negative about the fifth worst team in the NHL and the team with the worst record in the NHL over the last seven years or whatever it is. Um, I don't know. To me, that kind of makes sense. It kind of seems like their job. Um, I mean, you go back to 2011, the media wasn't that negative, right? Like people were having fun and writing fun articles. 
Um, the media doesn't want the team to be bad. And it's like the classic, <laughs> like, I, I don't know how many times I've talked about this, but no one wants the team to be bad that they, mm-hmm. that they work on covering. It's so much harder to do the job because less people pay attention. You make less money because of it. You get your articles, don't get clicks. So like, no one wants the team to be bad. Uh, and I, and I think criticize and, and saying like, it's the media's fault that the team is bad. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just trying to shift the blame, right? I think it's more to do with the players not performing than it is on the media being critical. Um, so I, I I think it was a a silly interview. Um, and at that point, I, I mean, I don't even know why, why bother have that guy on if he's going to say dumb stuff (laughs) to be frank. Um, I think that's where we're going to wrap up, uh, for the night. I thank you guys very much for hanging out with me. I do have to uh, hop in my car and drive out to hockey. Um, so thank you for joining me tonight. Shout out to all of our members. Uh, if you are interested in joining as a member, there is a join button, uh, down in the, uh, down in the, the little join button down below the, the chat there. Uh, shout out our backstage members, Shannon, Terry, Kurt, Lucas, uh, BL tubes who joined the VIP tier today. Thank you guys very much. If you enjoyed hit the like button or the dislike button, no one can see if you dislike it anymore, apparently. So I don't know, hit it or hit the like button and both help me. So, uh, hit a button, uh, do all that stuff and, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on Twitter, all the above. I'm, I I said a couple days ago that I was going to do a Twitch stream soon and I didn't do it that day. Um, I'm going to do one soon because I am now set up to do one. So follow my Twitch Parker's pucks. If you're interested in just sort of hanging out, uh, playing some NHL and some dumb stuff like that. And, uh, I will see you next time.